Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. The special meeting of the Governing Board of Education is called to order by myself, Adam Skimovitz, at 4 p.m. sharp on Tuesday, September 6, 2022, at the Temecula Valley Unified School District's Administration Center, conference facilities, rooms A through C. Are there any requests for changes to the agenda? I'll take a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Motion is adopted 5-0. <clears throat> in attendance, we have the governing board, myself, Adam Skumovitz, president, Barbara Broche, clerk, Mrs. Sandy Hinkson, Mr. Stephen Schwartz, and Mrs. Allison Barclay. Secretary of the Board, we have Dr. Jody McClay, Superintendent. Mrs. Nicole Lash, Assistant Superintendent of Business Support Services, is attending via Zoom. Mrs. Kimberly Velez, Assistant Superintendent, Educational Support Services. Mr. Frank Arce, Assistant Superintendent, Human Resources Development. Mrs. Nicole Deus, Assistant Superintendent, Student Support Services. And Mrs. Lene Anasibar, Executive Assistant to the Superintendent. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> all right, next is time for public comments. Public comment is restricted to only items listed on the special meeting agenda. All comments will be limited to three minutes in the order received to a maximum total time of 30 minutes. Unless the, the item has been placed on the published agenda in accordance with the Brown Act, there shall be no action taken. No discussion will be made regarding personnel issues in open session and all public comments are an important part of the board meeting and are given careful consideration by the governing board. This evening we have no public comments, so we'll move ahead with the board workshop we're starting with the master facility plan, project priorities, funding, allocations, and next steps. I believe this is M Mrs. Lash. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. I yes. apologize. I'm not able to be there in person, but I'll try to walk through this um, remotely. So we're going to talk about facilities prioritization tonight. If we move to the next slide, you'll see the agenda, um, which includes, number one, a reminder of our current priorities. We'll walk through available funds. We'll uh, talk through the remaining priorities that still need to be um, worked through, themes from the facility master plan, and then consideration of remaining funds. And since this is a workshop, I'll give this presentation and then I'll hand it off to you for discussion and any questions that you might have for me or Mrs. Dixon is also present tonight. Okay, so as a reminder, the board priorities um, that have already been approved are the TK-8 school site, HIIA relocation, and then phase two of Chaparral High School. Go ahead. Uh, back in March, we held a meeting where we discussed available funding at that point in time was that bottom number, that 73 million. This was pulled straight from one of the slides back in March. And we, this was our starting point when we were discussing um, the next phase or phase two of the K-8 site. So of the 73 million remaining in facility funds, if you go to the next slide, the board approved the scope of the K TK-8 site to be at that $31 million number to include all of those things listed all the way up until the solar for the new building. So with $73 million remaining that were available or uncommitted, the board committed $31 million of those dollars for the TK-8 <coughs> site. 
that leaves $42 million left in facility dollars um, to still prioritize, which is what we're gonna talk about tonight. So the next slide will um, talk about what's happened since March. Uh, first of all, great news. We've heard that we are going to be receiving some state matching dollars to the tune of about 6 million, which is wonderful news. Um, there's a couple projects that have come up since March um, that we've had to dedicate some facility dollars to. First of all, Jackson and Nick Valley entrance upgrades. And then also Great Oak High School, their special education restrooms have needed to be updated um, to function properly with the programs running on that. So tonight, the total available funding for us to discuss is actually 46.7 million. Okay, so talking about remaining priorities, um, the first thing is the H, go ahead. Sorry, thank you. The HIIA relocation. So um, we're looking at various campuses uh, throughout the district, and these are the criteria that we're kind of looking for. Number one, space available on existing campuses. We're looking for um, availability of parking or adding parking, if that's possible, ingress and egress, and um, as well as like location, preferably being centralized. And so we're trying to look for which campuses could host this um, program to be self-contained, to feel like its own campus within a campus. No matter where it goes, there will be relocation costs that include um, an entrance. So when you walk in, it feels like a front office um, and you have an admin area. We'll need to do flooring and landscaping. We'll need to add additional parking because even of all the places that we've looked at, um, there's no place that has sufficient parking now um, as it stands. Fencing to make it, um, as I mentioned, self-contained. Sound barriers or movable walls, the type of program that it is will have multiple teachers per classroom. And so it will necessitate putting up these in uh, classrooms to divide up those teachers paint and signage, and then lastly, ADA upgrades. So we anticipate the moving or relocation of Home Instead to be approximately $1.4 million. Next is the Chaparral High School Phase Two. As a reminder, these bullet points are what was already appro approved as part of Phase One. The last bullet on there that's a little bit separated um, wasn't part of phase one. It was actually part of the late start implementation. We added um, practice field lighting at all three comprehensive high schools. So these are all either com completed or well underway as part of phase one for Chaparral High School. Um, if you go to the next slide, we'll look at the facility master plan survey. There were 88 participants and I kind of enlarged the two um, uh, greatest responses, which was repair and modernize older or existing permanent school facilities. And then the, the second was um, providing that second gymnasium. And uh, we met with the Chaparral High School Committee to kind of affirm these priorities. And they added um, a few more items to that priority list that we'll talk about on a later slide. So think, keeping these two priorities in mind, if you move forward, We'll talk about first repairing and modernizing existing facilities. The committee did tour the campus multiple times and one of the things that we found was the science rooms um, definitely needed upgrading. If you look at these pictures, especially the one on the right, you can see how small and narrow the sinks are in the science classrooms. They're not even, they're barely big enough to stick your hands in, let alone to put any, um, anything in to actually wash it. So we are recommending that we move forward with renovating these science classrooms to be more functional and align with the instructional program. Um, if we move forward with the um, athletic facility, if you can see the athletic facility, it's that orange box down at the bottom of your screen. That's where the athletic facility would go. There is a attached to that a long rectangular yellow space. That's where the um, um, sand volleyball courts would be installed if we decided to move forward with those. But there's somewhat of a domino effect with, um, with putting in the new athletic facility. So if you go to the next slide, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So currently, um, is, 
the weight room is in the in the what used to be the multi-purpose room. So if we built this new auxiliary gym, it would include rock, locker rooms, the weight room, and some PE spaces. If we did that, uh, we could convert what's currently the weight room back to the multi-purpose room, and that would be that $2.5 million number. And then lastly, where the building is going is where the current basketball and tennis ball courts are. So if we wanted to build this um, second gym, we would have to relocate the basketball and tennis uh, courts. And that's that $1.999 million number. So the total approximate cost is $33.3 million. Um, where these numbers came from in the facility master plan, it defaults to construction being completed in five years with escalation costs of 4%. Escalation costs are actually more like 6%, and we're hoping that we would get it done before five years, but this is just an estimate to kind of get the conversation started. So if you go to the next slide, looking at Chaparral High School, phase two, there's that $4 million for science room upgrades. There is um, the athletic facility with that $33.3 million number that I just showed you on the last slide. And then there's the sand volleyball courts, which are approximately a million dollars. If we cut that, we wouldn't save a full million because that land would still need to be filled in back there. It would just be filled in with something else. So it could bring that price down. But um, if we move forward with this, we're recommending that we just do it all at the same time. So the total cost would be that $38.3 million um, approximately. The other things that came up throughout the conversations with the committee um, are listed down below in that teal color. So landscape improvements, we estimate to be about $445,000. We are definitely going to do this and we think we're going to do it out of our grounds budget. It's already something that our new ground supervisor has been tasked with looking into to really revamp that campus and make it look nicer. Replacing the turf on the existing field it has already been included in our deferred maintenance plan. So we are also planning on doing that. That's about $550,000. We did hear about additional outdoor seating since students during lunchtime are sitting on the ground, either in hallways or around campus. So we are looking at options for additional seating outdoors that wouldn't come out of facility dollars. Um, and we're still kind of pricing that out. That's a, new, a newer um, thought that we're still working through. And then the last thing is the HVAC replacement. So Chaparral High School's HVAC system is its original one, so it's about 25 years old. My understanding is it's never quite functioned properly since its inception, um, and anybody that's been on that campus or has attended board meetings over the last decade will, will know that we've heard about those issues that we've had, and we are uh, constantly utilizing resources to just maintain the existing system. We had an engineer come out and do um, a study for replacement. Um, they're actually putting together kind of some different options for us right now, but we anticipate no matter what we go with, it will be an expensive replacement. Somewhere at least $50, 50 million dollars, potentially even higher. But the good news is it's something that we can do in increments over time. Um, so we don't have to commit to doing it all at once. So if you move to the next slide, that's Chaparral High School phase two. If you'll recall, uh, the TK-8, what we've committed to in scope already is phase two of three. So currently uh, set to open fall of 2023 is the TK-8 uh, campus at phase two with, I believe, and Janet can correct me, but it's about 600 kids is the capacity Eventually, if we would like to expand that capacity, we would need to be moved to phase three. Um, and that's the, the yellow areas where we would add more classroom buildings, expand the NPR, things like that. So just kind of planting that seed, that phase three is, is still lingering out there for that TK-8 site. If you go to the next slide, we kind of combine, um, or we look at the themes from the master plan. So 
the number one thing we heard at the elementary school was adding shade at least over the play structures so that the kids could utilize the play structures more frequently. Um, this is about $1.8 million. Middle schools, we heard um, a, to appropriately size teaching space, spaces for specialized programs such as VAPA and STEM. I know we've heard frequently about the TMS band room. This would fall within that category. Um, a second gym at Great Oak High School. So this was one of their top priorities for Great Oak and keeping in mind if we add a second gym to Chaparral High School, Great Oak would be the only high school, comprehensive high school without a second gym. Flexible furniture we heard uh, requested at all levels and then also, also outdoor learning spaces and shaded outdoor learning spaces we heard at all levels throughout the facility master plan. So taking all of this into consideration, staff's priorities for moving forward, uh, we'd like to categorize them as priority one and priority two, priority one. And, and this is all basically everything that we've already said, just quantified. So relocation of HIIA, Chaparral High School, the science rooms and the athletic facility, the TK8 phase three would be our, our priority one as well shade structures over those play areas, and then the Chaparral High School HVAC system. Prior, our second priority or second grouping of priorities would be those outdoor learning sp spaces, flexible furniture, and those spe specialized learning spaces at middle schools. Now, if you see cumulative cost uh, for priority one is $127 million, which we don't have tonight to commit, and so if you go to the next slide, our recommendation for approval of the remainder of the funds would be to relocate HIIA, to upgrade the science uh, classrooms at Chaparral, to build the second uh, gym for Chaparral High School since it solves a number of issues, including them not having an NPR. But you'll notice that the Chaparral High School gym facility is also similar in cost to the TK8 Phase 3. So if the board chooses, they could interchange those two projects. Third would be doing the play structure, shade structures over the play areas and then dedicating whatever dollars are left out of whatever falls out out of those first four things listed, whatever's left over to Chaparral High School HVAC. And we're hoping that if we can scrounge up some deferred maintenance dollars, if we can find any other dollars to help match these facility dollars to really make a dent in that Chaparral High School HVAC system. So I know we do have a high ending fund balance in our general fund. So if you move to the next slide, I'd just like to remind the board that once we start talking general fund, that opens it up to a far greater uh, things outside of just facilities. We've been hearing from increases for things like, you know, more band equipment, more athletic equipment, um, the district, more coaching stipends, um, the district paying for a lot more of the transportation costs for athletics, electronic marquees, expanded technology, um, CTE. So we if we'd like to talk about using up any of our unrestricted general fund, I'm happy to agendize that for a later date and time, but that really expands the conversation. Um, so I just want us to keep in mind that if we start talking unrestricted general fund, I know we've been hearing um, some various requests outside of just facilities that I'd want to bring to the conversation. And with that, um, we're here. Go ahead, Lene to answer any questions you may have or just um, give you some time to discuss. Thank you, Mrs. Lash, that was good timing. And I appreciate you <laughs> making it possible. I know it was a struggle there, but uh, thanks for the presentation. Open it up, anyone wanna go first? Yeah, I have one initial question. This has to do with, um, with funding. So when I look on the, uh, I, our, our master facility plan on the um, website for that now. Um, and I look at the, I'm looking at the page that's overall district-wide modernization eligibility. So it gives um, total for the district, the state share, the district match, and then the total projects. 
And so it has it by year, 2022 through, uh, I don't know, 2031. And so out of those projects that you've listed, um, so for instance, for 2022, it shows, do we need to find that? Are you trying to locate it on there? Might be under mass. I don't know where it's at because I just printed it. I think it might be under master plan costs. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's where it's at for the total one. Okay. Where's modernization eligibility? Did I miss that? There we go. Yes, except um, when you get there where it says funding eligibility report, click on view report. And then it, the summary would be all the way down at the bottom pages. I think it's page 16 and 17. So starting by looking at year 2022 or 2023. So my question here is, is besides the dollars that you mentioned that we currently have in our um, building fund, which um, I think we started the year close to 80 million. I don't, you, you know, you indicated some of the funds that have already been committed for or spent, um, that there are some um, state share or matching funds available here. And so I, my question is, of, of the projects that you've mentioned, well, actually I have two questions. Of the projects that you've mentioned, do any of those, would we be eligible for uh, a state share to match? Because obviously that's one way to maximize our dollars. If you look at 2022, the state share could be 50 million and the district match could be 30 million. So we could essentially accomplish $84 million worth of projects with our $30 million investment. Now we all know that we don't get that money right now, right? It takes a while, but nevertheless, um, uh, you know, that money would potentially come at some point. So that was, that was my question is, has that been a consideration? Because um, as we prioritize projects, if there are things that we could apply for and get some matching funds, um, I know that the state has opened up some um, additional monies that weren't there before. And secondly, so that's just in general, because I see a lot of schools there with some projects that perhaps we could um, think about. And then the second question is, is of the things that are on here, would any of that, you know, were um, presented to us, do any of those fit into these numbers as potential areas that we could qualify for? And, um, and, and I'd like to look at that in a little more in depth, like when Temecula Valley says, um, high school says that there's, $12 million worth of state money out there. Which projects is that for and such? So maybe that was a long question, but um, I, I'm just interested in, you, you presented what we have on hand. And so I'm asking, is there a potential to leverage some additional dollars with some state match for some of these projects um, so that we can have a, you know, a little bit more bang for our buck here? Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, it, uh, Mrs. Lash indicated that we are, I was notified last week that we're going to get $6 million and that's from that additional state amount. We were asked if we, we wanted to get funded early for it. Um, those are actually projects that were finished in 2018. So yeah. early is kind of a relative term. So just keep in mind that anything that we apply for, it's four or five years out. Um, and, well, it, it's going to rely on a state bond to to get some of those. So of the pro, or of the um, plans, actually, most of the chaparral funding is in 2023. There's a little bit there, so chaparral. Um, we are doing some deferred maintenance work and ESSER work at Temecula Valley High School, and we're going to use the ESSER fund as our match 
So we will apply for matching dollars to use some of that Temecula Valley High School money. So um, just kind of clawing back the additional dollars. And so that would basically reimburse what we spend the money from, which is going to be Jason's deferred maintenance money. So if we get reimbursed for it, we can't get reimbursed for ESSER because we have to spend the ESSER dollars. But if we use deferred maintenance to redo the pool, to replace some carpet, things like that, we c and we get reimbursement, we can put that back into deferred maintenance. Um, as far as can other I, projects, I mean, other you? projects that we talked about, you have a minimum amount that you have to apply for. That's kind of why we were looking at a, a few big things at um, Temecula Valley, the pool being the biggest one. Um, you have to apply for at least 100 student grants, which at the high school level comes out to a million dollars. It's a little bit less at the middle school and the elementary school. So doing a shade cover at an elementary school, it's not a big enough project for us to apply for state dollars on. Helen Jackson has dollars there, but what we're doing for the security in the lobby is not a big enough project for us to apply for state dollars on. It would have to be about twice that size of project. So to answer your question, Mrs. Hinkson, um, as we are drawing near the end of our bond dollars, we honestly just took the approach of what is the priority. Um, I understand maximizing dollars through state match, but with, with, the, um, with our ending balance in facilities being 45 million or 47 million, whatever that number was, we just took a straight prioritization approach of what we felt what the greatest need was. So if, if we don't um, apply for those dollars now for 2022, and um, let's say we do have additional monies in our building fund next year or the following year or something like that, are those monies still available for to us or is it yes. if we don't? Okay, so we yeah, can go we back. we don't lose them. We can go backwards. In okay. fact, that what you see there in 2022 is kind of an accumulation of everything we haven't applied for okay. to this point. And then on the 2023 where it says Chaparral has a state share of 14.4 and district match of 9.6, is there only certain items that we can apply for that fit in that? Or would some of these projects that we're thinking of because we're almost in 2023 right now, um, would we be able to maximize that and, you know, uh, use some of that towards our chaparral projects? We can apply some of it to our chaparral projects. Adding a building, like adding a second gym, is not something that that um, qualifies for modernization dollars unless we tear down another building of equal square footage. What about the um, science buildings? I mean, the science the science buildings, yes, those would qualify for modernization because we're updating an existing building. Okay, so the, um, the the gym would not, but any of the other projects mentioned for Chaparral could potentially. As long as it applies to an existing, something existing out there. So if the you HVAC? add square footage, they, they won't cover that. The HVAC system? Yeah. There's a potential way to make a bigger dent in the HVAC maybe too. Okay, and then I have, I, I, wanna, I wanna ask one question. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, uh, I have many, but I'm, I'm gonna ask something about Chaparral. So um, a, a second gym. So are we thinking, is this a gym that's like a multi-purpose gym or is this a gym that's meant to ha have a basketball court and is it one court, two courts? And then how does that, I guess I'm just asking, how does that compare to our other high schools? Cause I know TV, we had, a, we had one and added two we have two at Chaparral. Are we going the opposite way, adding one? And how many do we have at Great Oak? And I, I'm just trying to make sure that this is a, um, something that's you know well needed. We haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. So it depends on, it, it's based on just a square, it's a square footage right now. How that actually gets divided up, I think everybody has assumed that in order to, to make the multi-purpose room that a weight room would be a, a portion of it how much of that's de dedicated to um, locker rooms, and then it's 
a practice gym or a PE gym, so. I guess my question is, is does that affect the cost then? So if we put in one more basketball court and weight room, um, does that make it not 33 million or whatever the cost was? That's, does that bring it down for us to um, something different? Because we did just modernize the entrance to the existing um, two basketball court gym, right? And upgrade that so that that could be um, a nicer place to have home games and for people to come and get excited about what's going on there in, on the basketball courts. Um, I'm not sure what that that new gym is going to be used for. Is that like the feature, you know, where we host the game, or are we going to host it at the other place since we just modernized that entrance? I I just want to. I mean, this is a lot of money, so I think I'll, that we need to I'll clarify jump in. the. the, the I, I vision. think it's more Janet. more for space. Janet. It's more Janet, for. I'll, I can jump in here. Okay. So I think the design is to be determined, um, but. The, there's a lot of competing interests in the existing gym right now. We're not only seeing that as a second gym, but also needing spaces for um, our PE coaches, we heard was a, a need. We heard that the yoga class is being done in the classroom right now. Um, as you know, the, the weight room, it will be located. So the design is to be determined. Um, but we do, we did hear loud and clear that TBHS utilizes their second gym all the time because with 3,000 kids on a campus, there's lots of competition to utilize sure. that gym. So I think we would um, still have that committee get together and meet and determine that design of what that would be. But I think it's solving a lot more than just the gym. Um, I believe the meeting room spaces and PE spaces are happening down in those um the old portables down on the lower part of campus. So we're trying to pull as much as we can outside of that. Um, we could see if it came in less than 33 million, but most of the time when we come up with these things, if anything, we, more gets asked for, not less. So it's, it just really depends on what we could come up with that square footage. I, and I was even wondering with the architects at one point, if we could get creative and make it almost like a two story, space because we only have a certain amount of square feet so if you can't go wider could you go taller to create some of those additional spaces like yoga rooms um, or meeting spaces so we we definitely said that we could talk through all of those things once you know we got approval for the scope and then we could move forward with the design okay that sounds good i just wanted to bring that up you know as far as thinking about the uses of the space making sure that we're utilizing it in a way that we need, not just sometimes we just go in there and go, oh, let's build two gyms or two, two courts. And then did that really meet our need? And was it the best use of our yeah. money? No, I completely so. agree with you. Completely agree with you. Other questions? Ms. Barkley. So on this, on this report that, that Sandy was referencing, um, where it's the overall district wide modernization so all of that listed for 2022, are those already projects that are happening? And then we're discussing additional projects? I know that's no, probably really- those, those are not necessarily, some of those we've applied for. Uh, Vintage Hills is on there. That's a project we completed this last summer. So we've applied for those dollars. But again, it, it could be four or five years before we get those dollars. Um, but the projects themselves are all scheduled to be no oh okay no not no not necessarily just, just to clarify so what happens on the eligibility for money is as a school ages when it becomes 20 years old for portables you become eligible for so much money per portable and 25 years for classrooms so this is money that is available for modernization at those sites not necessarily that we planned a particular project for them. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, got it. So so saying that the district will match that, it would only be matched if we were deemed eligible for the state share. Right, and you, okay. you actually have to have a project through DSA and construction um, so Mrs. contracts Barkley, bid and, and awarded before you would get the, the money. Really, the purpose of this um, this report is to just show eligibility. 
Okay. It doesn't necessarily have to do with any projects that we have right now. This is just based on the age of our facilities and what type of facilities they are, what we could be eligible for if we decided to put our own district dollars forward, how much of the state could potentially match in the future if we move forward with those projects. Okay, got it, that makes sense, thank you. Didn't we just do Vail Elementary? A total uh, renovation or modernization? We did. Is so, that what's up here, or is this something in the No, future? that's, we've applied for those dollars. Rancho is also up there. We've applied for those dollars as well. For what Temecula we Elementary, we did a modernization. We actually got those dollars, but these are rooms that have aged and become eligible in the meantime. So some of these we've applied for and gotten. Some of them, we've, uh, those dollars we haven't gotten yet. Some of them we've applied for and we're, we're still waiting for the money. Okay. Um, some of them we have not done a project for. I have a couple questions. Um, this one's a little bit out of left field, so I apologize. It's something I was looking at the plans for the K at school and install. Um, now that we have Universal TK, what are we doing for play structures for those students because those existing play structures on the elementary schools? The, kinder, the kindergarten structures that we have are for ages three through. Okay, that was my question. Three through eight, I think. Or three to five? Uh, I think they go a little bit higher than that, okay. but, but they go down to three. That's, okay, that's that the was, main that was point. My, that was my question. <laughs> okay. I was just looking at that play structure and I was wondering how many play structures were we gonna have to add into every mm -hmm. elementary site, so that's a good thing. Okay. Um, can we bring up the priorities? list again. I'm happy to send uh, the, the board this presentation right now. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so when I see the, the priority level one, I mean, I, I don't see anything on here we can't live without. Um, which I know is hard because it's $127 million. Um, we have to relocate the, our homeschool program because we need to open our new school out of French Valley because our schools are so impacted out in that area. The science building, I mean, we were on that tour, so that's virtually impossible. We have to do that. Um, I would like to see the TK, uh, the TK through eight phase three happen. I mean, the builders aren't stopping building and I don't know if anyone drives out there in the mornings. It's impossible to get anywhere um, during school hour, during that, that drop off and pick up time. I know our community is extremely frustrated. Um, shade structures over play areas, 100% agree with. The HVAC is probably not even up for debate. That has to happen. Um, the athletic facility and sand volleyball, that is tough if we have to enter, we have to choose between basically building out the new school or creating this additional athletic facility that makes so much sense. I believe the other two comprehensive high schools do have sand volleyball courts already, correct? No, they, they do both have sand volleyball courts, I'm gonna call them. I believe yes. they need yeah. to have some changes made to make them match the uh, new CIF Requirement. standards. So. Sure, but they do have them. And They're so, there. <laughs> so we have, you know, we have, we have Three high schools, two can participate in a, that CIF sport. We have one that cannot. Mm -hmm. um, they can't practice because they don't have sand. We're unfortunately not that close to a beach. Um, and the athletic facility, the extra gym, if you're ever there for wrestling and basketball and um, yoga or volleyball, boys and girls on all of those sports, it's kind of crazy how you could try to be going to your volleyball practice and you're getting nailed by a basketball because time is, a, it's scarce. My son played basketball so yeah, it, it, I mean, it's, it's managing that time in the gym when they're trying to set up for other activities, maybe band or maybe ASB, maybe peer leaders is trying to, I mean, it's just almost impossible. So, I mean, this, this priority list right now, I, I'm good with sticking with because I think all of those things are so needed. Some of them go hand in hand together. Yeah, I wanted to ask, can you bring up on the, the website again, can you bring up the page that says facility utilization? 
because I think that one of the things that you just mentioned, um, Mrs. Broch, is um, really important out to that area that's so impacted. Yeah, look at those blue bars there. So if we look at, um, and, and that's the whole purpose of doing this facility master plan so that we have the data to help us make these um, decisions on what to prioritize, right? And so if you look at um, Bella Vista Middle School, there's 20 spots left at that school before it's at capacity. And if you look at um, Alamos, there's 32 spots before it's at capacity. And if you look at our other schools, we have schools that have three, 400 spots available, okay? You know, there's, there's, there's room in our other schools. Those are very impacted sites that I think the K-8 or the TK-8 school will bring relief to that area. And that was part of the reason why we approved it in the first place, right? Because, um, because it is so impacted out there. The difficult thing is looking at that priority list and realizing there's a choice to be made between the gym or the, um, the school. So let me just clarify if I, if I can. The TK-8 school out there will open in August of 23. Right now, if you do nothing more to it, it will have a capacity limit of 600 students. So choosing to go right now with the additional athletic facility at Chaparral will not stall the opening of that new school that will provide relief in that area. Building phase three, though, of that site would allow the capacity to be greater and perhaps some additional programs that their facility will lack year one. So that's the what, So it won't the, push the opening. To what capacity would that increase it to? If we Do you know off the top of your head? The, the master plan capacity is about 1,000 students. 1,000? It, it depends on how many yeah. special education programs we put out there. And, but is it will the still open. The have up is the $46 million one. Say that again? The slide that yes. we should be looking at for this conversation, if we're giving direction, if I'm right, Mrs. Lash, is the one that I think the total is like 46 or... Right. Yeah. So that's the first step. All the phase three version of the K-8 school, that would be after. That's when it gets to the funny money of whatever the one was, 127 million. This is what we're talking about for today. And then where it expands was maybe the last slide where it went into, um, not, not that one. Well, one that more, one, one yeah. more. The, the one after that, Lene. That was the one. Right before the kids. No, nope. right, <laughs> good the other way, <laughs> right before the kids, that one. So Excellent. that would be, if we're gonna say, we're gonna go out, talk about, are we prioritizing and sticking with the 46 million? And then if we're gonna dig into, you know, the ending fund balance, are we gonna prioritize this? When we looked at the master facility plan, it was over a 20 year period, $400 million, what was it? It was kind of. Oh, it, almost a billion. billion. Yeah. A billion. Yeah. A billion. Round it up. Okay, so, <laughs> I mean, I think for the conversation today would be back to that 46 million, are we good with that? And then what would the next step be as more funds come available, whether they match from the state or I know there's a proposition on the ballot this fall that's gonna increase funding. I think the bottom line is all of this stuff needs to happen. What the only thing I was going to add to this, it, all of the, there's a balance, right, between, you know, functional things like that. Sci those pictures in the science room are, you know, yeah. I mean, it's not great, and it needs to be taken care of, just like HVAC and so on. And then there's the things that um, increase the quality of the school in general, whether it's a gym or the shade structures, that sort of thing. Um, but it's kind of like a constant balance of what we absolutely have to do for these schools to function, and then how can we make them a little bit nicer, have a little bit more advantages with programs and that sort of thing. If right. I could, that yeah. is exactly what you are tasked with this evening. If you would be so kind as to look at this 46.7 million and help give direction to how you want that, th that money allocated. I think where Mrs. Broch was going is that it's almost an exact dollar amount to do that middle line, the CHS athletic facility and sand volleyball, as it is phase three of the new school out in French Valley. All I was trying to clarify is if you leave this list as it is, that will not stall the opening of that school. It will limit us a little bit on enrollment the first year, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. 600 when you're opening a new school, 
is still great and, and would probably suffice. Um, but I think that's where you were going as you could because those are almost equal dollar amounts, split those out. And then the last thing, and then I'll be really quiet because this is a board workshop and we want you all making these decisions. The last thing would be if you choose to go into the ending fund balance and start looking at like that other list that Mrs. Lash put forward, we would recommend that we agendize that in the very near future because that's, that's a very different conversation with all kinds of other needs and wants that we would want you to be able to consider. So just to come, okay, so one question. On the question of the athletic facility and sand volleyball versus phase three, if we didn't do the versus, if we just said, yep, the phase three is happening, when is phase three currently scheduled out to start? Is it, is there an idea it, currently? It is not currently scheduled. It's just designed and when we have the funds? It's not designed. I okay. mean, we've, we've got a very rough design. You know, we've got blocks on a piece of paper. But um, that is up to you. What does phase three include? It oh, includes two additional classroom wings, the final bus loop, and the expansion of the NPR, so and a so locker so room. It is, generally, it, it is generally designed. The architect hasn't come in and actually built the, but it is, yes, Mr. Skibowitz, it is designed overall. There, there's a master plan design. It's not. It has not gone through DSA. But typically, so typically, you you start the school next year. There's 600 kids that are in there. Mm -hmm. We realize that we have a need to jump it up to a thousand. Then you guys bring it to us and say, all right, here's where our budget it, budget is at. And no, let's under move normal forward. circumstances, that would take a couple of years. Couple more years, no matter yeah. what. Okay. Mm -hmm. And with the athletic facility and sand volleyball. If we were to say, let's move forward on that a couple years or faster? It, it's going to be close to two years before it would be done. Okay. If we start now. Mm -hmm. we could do it today. And what's functioning is the MPR at, at the TK8 school? They actually have an MPR right now, and it's, it's larger than our MPRs and the huge stage. Um, if you compare it to our elementary schools. So the part that would be added would be additional stage in the back and then um, two arts rooms, you know, like a band and a drama or a band and a... And, and those these are portables so. currently, the, the band room, or they're, they're not using no. it right now the way it is, right? There's, there are no portables out there right now and we are not putting a portable in for it. The portable that was going to be for the band room the first year when it was going to open as the 6-8 is going to be the basis building. So as a TK-8, we would not have the ability to offer music programs because we wouldn't have a facility? I, it, we could I would not do, do TK-8 until we did the third phase. We, right now it's we'll, opening as well, TK-6. Hold, hold on. Janet, hold on. Sorry. Um, we, we could, but we don't, wouldn't have specialized classrooms, but you could hold hold certain classes in classrooms, if that makes sense. So Yeah, you'd um, need a double wide or a double classroom for a band or something. Yeah. So these are all conversations Portals, that yeah. have been had at length in cabinet, okay. and hence why you see the recommendation. recommendation. I simply wanted to clarify that, that doing it this way will not stall the opening. Okay. We but will it, open that you. school. But it's opening as a TK6 next year. As of right now, that, that's what the numbers would look like. With a max so. capacity of 600. Okay, but no, but are there <clears throat> plans to move it to, to eight? Typically when you open a middle school or a high school, it, it's very common, and especially when you're opening a TK through eight, particularly in a district that's only had separate middle schools and elementary schools, you open and then you grow your children with the population. Just like when we open high schools, we typically open as a 910, and then they become your 11th and your 12th, uh, very similar in a K-8. Okay, so that would be the plan is that 2023, it goes through six, then you add the next year seven, then eight? As of this point, that would be our plan, but okay. as we've learned anything in the last couple of years, things change very quickly. But Got I just it. wanted to make sure you all knew that doing this plan will not stall that new school from opening. Thank right. you, that, that was my question, <laughs> and I think 600 students will provide relief. Exactly. That I'm sure hopefully French Valley is listening to this right now and saying, yes, we're gonna get relief. So yeah. I am good moving yeah. forward with these priorities. Okay. Mr. Schwartz. I just had a question about the usage, the uh, slide with the usage. 
It's not on the slide, it's on the website, the one with no, the blue bars. No, she just showed it before. The yeah. facility utilization. Yeah, it's a different. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this one. Right? Yeah, the one with the blue lines? Yeah. Okay, so do we uh, anticipate that we're going to move the Home Instead Academy to one of the schools that has the least usage now? Is it gonna be a, a middle school, an elementary school, or we haven't decided? So cabinet has we're already- We're looking at, Go ahead, I can Nicole. answer that. Beautiful. Um, we're, oh, I'm sorry, Jody. were you answering that? It's hard for me to hear over here. No, go for it, Nicole, you're better suited for this. So we're looking to keep them all together because that program is so unique. We don't wanna split them up between a middle school and an elementary school campus, although we would consider that. Um, we are looking, as I mentioned, towards the central part of, uh, of town, if possible. And yes, we are looking at those with space available um, and and so this capacity uh, look does provide some input but also if you think about having its own entrance and its own exit and things like that some of these campuses that may have space couldn't provide for that so um, it, it's a lot of factors that we're taking into consideration but this is one of them the capacity is one of them okay so now if you could switch back to that other slide that we were just looking at um, I, I am in agreement with everything that's on there. And of course, you know, we do have limited dollars, not that one, the other one, that one. Um, you know, the science rooms, absolutely. That's, um, we need to make sure that our facilities support our programs. And I've said that a million times, right? I, I do support Chaparral's athletic facility because it solves the problems of the NPR, the, um, the meeting space, the weight room, the uh, all the variety of problems. I, I agree with that. I just think that we need to be um, put together a committee and be very smart on how that's designed. Um, we definitely need to. Something that what came up that was common amongst um, in the survey was shade structures, big time. And I hope that 1.8 addresses all the shade structures, including. Some that were, sh when I look through the master facilities plans and I see the maps that show like some common spaces and things, I, I'm, I'm assuming that that covers that. I was really glad to h hear you talk, Mrs. Lash, well, about. 1.8 does not cover that. That's strictly over the play structures. Only play structures? Mm -hmm. The For all that common area, it was, I wanna say it was in the range of 20 million. I'd have to look it up. Holy it was, smokes, it was quite okay. a bit more. Well, but, that was well, one, of, one of the top but the, needs. But the 20 million, it, it included also redoing maybe some of the flooring underneath. It, it's not, we could definitely look at shade at Chaparral, Mrs. Hinkson. This is, Janet's right, we did just look at the, over the um, play structures, but we could also evaluate what that looks like at um, Chaparral specifically as yeah, well. Yeah, I'd kind of like to have a picture of what is what is the 1.8 if it's just play structures at elementary what what are the other big needs for shade and what's the cost of that because there are some sites that are in great need um, of, of shade and that came up throughout the survey at every level shade being a, a important thing and certainly in a week like this we realize well, how can, can I ask you is. just because we're on that topic just can I ask one thing sure let Sorry. me finish my thought then okay, okay go no ahead. go ahead okay um, on the shade structure like it's kind of one of those things right of HVAC 20 million for shade or for HVAC because mm -hmm. if you looked at this week right mm -hmm. I have three young kids I don't think a shade structure would allow them to be outside. No. I, I think they still would be inside and good AC would make that a little bit more doable. So it's always, you know, which one is the priority? The shade structure over what degree temperature is relevant that it's gonna help the kids and so on. I, I don't know. You're, you're I, going, I can it, tell you from being an elementary teacher how important shade is. The kids go out and, um, you know, they eat and they're released and they can't find shade anywhere and it could be 80 degrees, it could be 90 degrees, okay? And they, you know, there are campuses that have like twigs for trees and you can, maybe one person can stand in the tiny bit of shade it provides, okay? And I just read an article today about how LA Unify is, is doing a big study on all their campuses and trying to, re, you know, add shade and reduce the, the amount of um, blacktop, right? Some of their sites have 
acres and acres of blacktop and the heat on those is like 140 degrees on the blacktop. So um, I, think it's an, I think it's an important thing and, and, and our public and students and teachers are telling us that it's important. What we can afford though, right? We, we do have to make some choices, of course. But, but um, you know, and all of these, um, as we think about the, the purpose of the dollars that have come to us from the federal government and from the state government um, during COVID and things, that, the dollars that have come to help us improve, um, you know, even this year to help uh, improve conditions for our students, conditions for learning, uh, learning opportunities. Um, and that's what's put, set us up in a nice position in our ending fund balance. And so I think we're, it's a good thing to be looking at spending some of that to, um, to address some of those things that improve those conditions and improve the programs. Now, one of the things for me though that is really missing that um, does support student programs and has been an issue for, I don't know, 20, over 20 years, right? is I don't see um, TMS band room up there. And that rose to one of our top four priorities now for, the, it's been on that list for five years. We went through the entire thing. It went through um, the architects that was ready to go. And then we said we were gonna come back and revisit it. And um, the cost on that is about five million. And to me, it fits in the same category as Chaparral Science Rooms. It's, it's a misfit for um, being able to provide the educational experience that our students need. Our facility is not supporting our program. And in that school, we have 50% of our kids participating in music programs. That's huge. And so I think that that's something that definitely needs to be addressed. I don't know um, where we fit it, but it needs to be, in my opinion, a high priority right up there with Chaparral Science rooms because um, the importance of that program. We've also talked about how important it is to have programs that connect school, kids to school, um, their emotional um, well-being, um, all of those kinds of things. It's just, um, I, it, it, it hurts me to see it left off of there because it is such a need. When I look around the district at our other middle schools, um, probably the second one might be Vail Ranch has a similar setup and, and, and so maybe down the road it's the next one, but of all of our middle schools, they all have either like Margarita got a new band room built. They're all, they're all at T Day Middle School got a beautiful remodel. I mean, I think um, Bella Vista has adequate space. This is one that is not meeting the needs of one of our largest programs in our district. And I don't think that the cost is, you know, way out there as far as what we would be gaining in meeting the needs of our students. And really, that's what those dollars came to us for, was to meet the needs of our students and provide them, um, Im improve their programs and facilities. So I just, I wanna put that out there because for me, that's a big thing that's missing. Okay, up when I look up there, yes, everything else is important too, but I'm trying to figure out how can we fit that in. Mrs. Hinkson, we you. did consider the TMS band room, I, and I, I, I do agree with you. It's a need that we need to address, but I think we landed where you're referring to is it, we didn't, we couldn't fit it in as a priority above any of these things listed in gray. Um, so if we were to add it, we'd have to take something out, and we just, I, I don't know what your recommendation is for taking what we would take out in order to make room for that is. The other thing to consider, there's only one class at TMS that's exceeding that capacity. We, we pulled those numbers and for now they're meeting in the multi-purpose room and I know that's not ideal, but the rest of the classes seem to fit just fine. Um, and we have the same thing at Bella Vista, we have the same thing at Great Oak High School. I know we have really huge classes of band and, and their capacity for the square footage is not ideal and we sh we do need to address that. Yeah, We just couldn't fit it into these priorities at this time. Well, part of being the classes, the class sizes have been adjusted because they've had to. So taking out your percussion and saying, I'm gonna make it a separate class because my percussion doesn't fit in the room with the rest of the band is not a solution, okay? That's a Band-Aid. Um, and, and I guess part of when you're asking where does the money come from, 
if we have a state share of $14.4 million next year for Chaparral, there's where some of the money comes from, okay? Um, and the other thing is, is maybe if we design that athletic facility and we're conscious of making it, you know, we, maybe we can get it near 32 million. Maybe we say that's our budget for that facility. Um, so I guess that's what I'm asking or, you know, I, I don't know, I think, I think it needs to be up there and we, and we look at where else we can, we can get the funding from, whether it's from the general fund, whether it's from um, uh, the matching again, state funds or whether it's from um, setting a budget for some of those other things and saying this is what we have for the athletic facility. No, no problem. And the board is welcome to set that as a prior priority. I just want to remind you all, if you go to the next slide, that we only have $5 million dedicated to Chaparral High School HVAC. That is nowhere near solving that problem. So again, um, whatever you prioritize, if, if $5 million falls out of the Chaparral High School athletic facility, I would argue that that should be put towards the Chaparral High School HVAC issue to take a bigger chunk out of that problem. Um, but the board can definitely prioritize it however you'd like to, but just keep in mind that we've only got 5.2 here towards a $50 million problem, essentially. Yeah, I think that Chaparral has been a real disappointment. My very first year on the board, 10 years ago, we, we um, approved $10 million to fix the Chaparral air conditioning. Several years back, there was another $5 million, right? There went $15 million. That's a lot of money, and it's still a problem. And now we have $50 million that essentially we're saying needs to go in front of other, all the other projects, right? Well, maybe that's the first thing we need to do is fix the air conditioning if it's that important because I, th I think it's really important. That's the comfort and um, ability to think and function of all of our students. I don't, you know, I'm, again, we have, a, we have 12 million coming. We had 8 million coming off of ELO or ESSER, whatever that was. Um, I know there's a, a, some other funds out there, but I think we need to apply for whatever we can and, and try to get that accomplished as quickly as possible too. So yeah, there's a lot of work to do, right? A billion dollars? I agree with you, and I, I think any extra funds, we need to get the HVAC completely replaced so this isn't a conversation every year. It's not a grievance that comes through that, you know, it's pushing to get this done. We need to probably head it off, but that's hard, right, Mrs. Ingson? Because I know you want to do that band room, but if it's, it's like if we have an extra $5 million, then we need to put $10 million into the HVAC and eat away at that 50 And And I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I wasn't here 10 years ago, so all I can see is now what's in front of us and what the problem is and how do we find a solution and being hot and not being able to think and yeah. feeling sick because you're too warm isn't acceptable. No, we need to start with the worst, worst first is the answer, right? Which buildings are the worst? Do them first and then work our way through it. And I don't think we can put 50 million in in year one or year two, but we can do worst first um, right, and, and if you'll recall, part of Chaparral High School phase one was to replace the swamp coolers, which, is, which are the worst. Um, and we ordered those long, long ago, and just because of supply chain issues, we still have not received those HVAC units. We were hoping to get them done last summer, and they still have not come in, and it's uh, September, so we're hoping that they come in and we can get them installed this coming summer. So those are the worst at Chaparral High School is those swamp coolers. Um, the art room that we've heard some issues about is on a swamp cooler. And so as soon as we can get those in, we're hoping to get them installed this summer. All right, well, and I think it'll help to reevaluate after we get the worst first taken care of and see what's next. And what's next doesn't necessarily mean $50 million. I don't think before every other project in the district, I think we have to then say, okay, what's the priority? which buildings are the worst, which ones need replaced first, and um, you know, it might take us five years, it might take us 10 years, but um, we need to address the ones that are the, the most, the biggest problem first. And so was the point, or the comment you made, Dr. McClay, about agendizing, discussing, utilizing any of the reserve, what's the timeline for, so if we get to a conclusion on the 46.7 today, and we say, yeah, we want to have a discussion first on the next step with 
dipping into ending fund balance, when would that take place? Mrs. Lash, could we be prepared for that for an October board meeting or is that too soon to come back and discuss ending fund balance? October might be pretty quick turnaround. I would ask for January, to be honest, um, because we're gonna start first interim here pretty soon. But I, I, I mean, I can put something together. I just don't know how quickly I need to go through literally all of, we meet with every single department and every single school site Could every it? single year and their budget requests go on there. So I would have to pull all of those to see what all of those requests are in addition to what we haven't covered in the facility master plan. Mrs. Lash, could it start with a discussion on uh, not compromising the, the reserve priority and what dollar amount, kind of similar to this of the 47, or sorry, 46.7 million, where there's a summary that's provided just on the, the dollars and not necessarily, I mean, I feel like we already looked at what the next priorities are and we have kind of a discussion related to the, the what, right? What we're gonna be looking to do, but could it just be the, the detail on the funds available that are, well, reasonably available to um, allocate? Is that a simpler start or is that not? We we could, but but this prioritization conversation has just included facilities. And that's my concern. Is there, if we would have thrown everything that the general fund could pay for, I don't know that these would still remain to be the priorities. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. So, I, think what, so I, what I can definitely said. bring forward fun, funding available mm -hmm. um, from, all, from all pots of money. Um, and maybe even look at what we're doing through deferred maintenance and things like that. But once we expand the conversation to not just talk about facilities, there's a lot of requests out there. Okay. So I think what we're asking though is, let's say just for some round random number here, let's say that the ending fund balance is a hundred million. Okay. Um, so the conversation about what portion of that hundred million are we willing to move forward with setting some priorities of things that are important, whether it be the TMS band room or um, CTE supplies or whatever it is, okay? Um, uh, VAPA programs, what, I don't, whatever it is that we have the conversation about, of that 100 million, how much do we still want to keep back for our comfort level for fiscal responsibility, right? To make sure that we are still in a nice position three years forward and that we haven't put ourselves into, um, you know, in any kind of questionable position uh, financially. I, yeah. I, I don't wanna make Mrs. Lash nervous. I think we could provide you with that number very, very soon. So, okay. Without actually setting priorities. But if we're going, if you'd like to say what you're going to spend those dollars on, I'd ask for a couple months, honestly. Well, well I would say on, Without setting priorities, we could we could see if that um, proposition passes in November, and we'll kind of have a better understanding of what is available. That I guess we don't already know. So it, yeah, I would say it would just be a numbers conversation, and we can discuss. So I present first interim at December. Okay. Do, would you like me to make it part of that conversation of dedicating ending fund balance for priorities? I think if you just. What I think if you just start with what Dr. McClay was saying on just getting kind of the simple broad stroke numbers, and then we can have a discussion well before the first interim to give you that direction without overwhelming the, your staff. Is that fair? Yeah. I'd like to request one other thing here though. Um, I think that there's a lot of priorities out there. I think that we have have one that has come to our table multiple times that we've talked about so I'd like to propose that within that discussion that you know maybe as we look at these priorities that we do make a commitment that the TMS band room is going to be something that we want to put into that spending and then beyond that we'll consider everything else. So are you ask sorry are you asking for the board to make that commitment right now for this next conversation? I think that saying that we want, that that's gonna be part, we, we can't fit it into this cool. funding that in our building fund, Okay. recognizing that we do have some reimbursements coming. We probably, I'm assuming we have some out right now that we may be getting. We have some that we'll be able to apply for. 
um, and the fact that this is a priority of ours that doesn't fit into this budget. We do have other dollars that we're gonna look at. Why don't we just say that will be part of that and then we'll look at all other priorities too and make a decision of how they land and fall. But that one's gonna come surface to the top is our first thing that we're gonna include in there. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to get, to get the best of everything, right? But get just so I'm clear, there. are you saying you want us to say tonight that that's first priority, first in line, and then we'll discuss everything else? Is that what you just said? I, I'm just saying I think that we should make a decision to say that is one thing we are gonna include that will be paid. We're gonna say, yes, we wanna do the TMS band room. We're gonna pay for it out of the general fund. And then beyond that, we're gonna look at the general fund What's left of, you know, like I, the example I gave, 100 million, we're gonna keep 50. What's, now there's 45 million left of that. Now let's set the priorities for the remaining 45. And you want that conversation to happen right now or do you want that conversation to happen when we look at all those? Well, we're talking about facilities right now. So I, I would like that conversation to happen now if we could, because the next conversation is gonna talk about more than facilities. It's gonna talk about a variety of programs, supplies, possibly facilities, those kinds of things as well, right? Right now we're focused on facilities. Okay, so if you have, if there are three board, or two more board members in addition to you that wanna put that as the first priority, then we can, I guess, address that now. I think for me, I have a hard time making that decision. I think at the, the point of this workshop is to look through where we're at with the, the first priorities up to that 46 million that we have available, and then how I understand it is, the next step is to then review dipping into any fund balance and then the plan uh, from there up to that 127 million over the next two, three years is what I understand from Mrs. Dixon. And so th th is that, that's, that's the question. Are there two other board members that wanna commit to the band room in front of anything else before we look at everything else or do we wanna wait and have that discussion at that time? For me, I need to wait until we see what's available because I see the priorities that are listed here. I, I need to know we're going to be able to finish the air conditioner at shop. I need to know we're going to be able to build out the TK, the TK through eight Great. school. And I, so until we have those numbers and look at it and how much we're going to have left, I think it's too soon to say, yes, we're going to commit $5 million. It, it seems like a ton of money to me and I know this is a huge priority for you. I support that 100%. Um, but I just can't put that in front of us completing the, the HVAC system at Chaparral. I'm not saying it should go in front. I'm saying we need to find ways to support the HVAC by doing the worst first. And that doesn't mean we're gonna put 50 million at once, right? I don't think that was ever the intention. I think we've already committed to the swamp coolers. What's the, what are the next buildings that need to be addressed? And we do those and then we go to the next buildings, so. So Mr. Schwartz, Mrs. Barclay, where do you stand? Uh, I think we made a commitment to uh, consider that room, several meetings. Uh, I agree it's important. I don't want to uh, rule out any other priorities without looking at them all together, but I think it's something that we do need to address when we talk about what available money we have. Okay. Okay. Good. And Good. and for me, I would prefer that we um, that we we already had said that this workshop may be more than one meeting, because there's a lot to talk about, right? And so I don't know if we can if you want to bring it back in a regular meeting or bring it back as a workshop again. Um, I prefer to. Um, I mean, this is this is something that's been going on. The master facilities plan is something that we've you know, been talking, I know I've been talking about it for like five years that we needed to update it. And it's been a year long project to get it updated. I would like to accomplish um, the last piece of this, which is setting the priorities based on the information that we have and the funding that we have um, before December. So another workshop before, or agenda is as a, information item before December. Yeah. Sure. Do you mean set the priorities for the general fund money or just in general? I think, I think yes. 
for the general fund? Yeah, I think we so need we're to have that the, conversation, we're, make that decision on how much funding we're going to um, uh, utilize out of the general fund and then take a look at what the, some of those things are that um, we want to take a look at and make the decisions on prioritizing those. So based on what Mrs. Lash was saying, would it be okay if we said we're gonna get the financial figures in the next few, this month, and then we can decide to add it on to the first interim in December? Is that what you're, you're talking about? Or you want a separate workshop or a separate meeting? I think we'd have to take something out of what we have in our agenda. I, I'm you? suggesting a separate workshop, a, a two hour workshop to look at what, what is out there. I know. You know, we did a study a few years back on VAPA needs. I know there's some CTE needs. Every, every school has needs, every program has needs, right? Um, and we have some needs of programs too, right? We have some facilities needs, there's a multitude of things. And I think that um, having that conversation um, helps us set the priorities and know what direction that we're going to, um, to, to move forward. So, um and I don't want staff to be upset, I'm throwing this off the top of my head, but we're a little crammed right now with three meetings in September and three meetings in October. One of the meetings in October though was a special workshop dedicated to communication and marketing with Mr. Evans. We could push that a month or two or three and replace the October workshop. I may be making Mrs. Lash very nervous. I don't know if we could be ready by October, but why don't you let us work as staff to kind of come up with some proposals and then Mr. Skumovitz and I, I think the workshop is a great idea. It's just a matter of where we get it in and I'm hearing that you'd like it sooner rather than later, which I understand. Yeah, yeah. I, um, one of the things I hear constantly in my school visits uh, from different programs is we have to go out and buy stuff ourselves. We don't get enough money, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, CTE, whether it's culinary, whether it's art teachers. And I, I understand, I was a teacher for many years and I bought stuff for my classroom all the time. So if we do have a big pot of money, and I don't know how much we allow now, let's say we give each art teacher $500 right now. I don't know what it is, but let's say that's what it is. If we have some extra bucks, I'd like to give them $1,000 instead of five. It's not that much out of a huge budget, but it's certainly a way of us showing a commitment to them in their program. So it's just a suggestion. We could kick it around or you could agree or not agree, but I know having been in the classroom, I had to dig into my pocket a lot and I know our teachers do that all the time. So anything we could do to support their program uh, I think is really important. So and that's the, the perfect example, Mr. Schwartz, of what Mrs. Lash was talking about. I mean, we have needs for PE materials, we have needs for VAPA materials, instruments, CTE consumables, classroom supplies, science materials, all of the above. So it's just a matter of us getting that all listed with a dollar amount for the board to consider. So if you're okay with it, I'm thinking we might push the communications workshop and replace it with something like this at a closer date. And I think it goes beyond just things too. I mean, you know, there's always technology needs. There's some, there may be some pressing facilities needs or even um, it, it might have to do with programs. Do we want to expand some of our VAPA or PE programs, do we want to be able to offer it every week at the elementary school instead of half of a year, right? Um, uh, and, and I mean, that's just something that popped into my head, but um, there, there could be other things as well, right? Um, so, so I think that, that we've, we've talked about some of those before, um, some of those creative ideas that help connect kids better, that um, um, improve our programs, um, that we have, haven't had the resources for, and that it, I think it's a good time to look at them. Um, and, and I, I, okay, so I have one more question related to this, and I'll, I'll save that for right now. Oh, if it's okay, I'll, so the one thing that I noticed that isn't up there that was a, a common thing that came up on the surveys was um, security for the, and safety for the schools. So. Um, window coverings and any other security items, whether it's cameras, whether it's um, our entries, whether it's re-looking at the type of fencing we have or locks or whatever. Um, and, and I know we had a wonderful security and safety presentation, right? And we're doing a lot, 
but are there other needs in that area? And as far as window coverings of some sort, I don't see that up there. Is it being addressed with other funding or? or? I'm gonna let Mrs. Lash. Oh. Yeah, so uh, I'm sorry, it's hard to see who's, who's going when you're on Zoom. Um, so window coverings, if you recall, we did dedicate, I wanna say around $3 million out of the in-person instruction grant towards window coverings. We are piloting two schools right now to see what shade of ballistic film works best for a classroom to do a couple things. So ballistic film obviously is the goal on the exterior, but we want to also have it um, tinted to help with the heat, but we don't want it tinted so dark that it makes, cl makes classrooms dark. So we are piloting two schools uh, right now that is gonna have that installed and we're just gonna make sure that we get it right before we roll it out as a standard district-wide. Um, so we are working on window coverings as far as security goes. Um, the, the other pieces of um, cameras and locks, I know that is all fa falling under Mr. Vickery and he's got the plan that he, um, he spoke to. But other than that, it didn't rise to like the top two in most instances um, when we looked district wide at these surveys. But we are addressing window coverings separate from this facility master plan. Thank you, Mrs. Lash. Are there any other questions or are we good wrapping up what you see on the screen and moving forward with that? Mrs. Barclay? Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> sorry, I got a frog in my throat. Um, so when or how will we hear about the situation with the Chaparral HVAC as, as the projects proceed? Um, can we be updated on that? Like how much money is actually left over for that? Cause we kind of said at least 5 million, maybe more. Um, just curious how and when we can receive updates on, on how that's going with the HVAC. I'm happy to provide those updates as we either get in the swamp cooler replacements or as we start um, applying these facility dollars, I'm happy to provide those uh, updates as they occur. Okay, that would be awesome. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? N no, I just kind of recapped for myself and I, I guess I just wanna spew this out there. Some of the top priorities, there's some things that um, we've addressed and some that we haven't. Elementary, the number one thing, this is I'm talking about elementary as total, was shade, right? So I think that um, we talked about going back and looking at that a little more intensely um, shade either in the form of shade structures or plants or trees, something, you know, to address shade. That was number one thing in elementary. And then outdoor shaded gathering spaces was number two. And then third was pick up and drop off and then campus security, outdoor learning, window coverings, uh, rubber for the playgrounds instead of um, wood shavings. Um, those were some of the top things, right? And, and I don't wanna go through the whole list. Middle school, number one was provide appropriately sized and equipped spaces for specialized programs, including BAPA and music rooms. That came up number one and that's all elementary, I mean all middle schools, that was the number one thing. And then second was repair and modernize the campuses. Third was gyms. And so we didn't talk about middle school gyms in this conversation at all, but I would think that that's something in priority in, in priority two or three down the road here. Um, those were things that came up in all levels. Libraries came up as a, a kind of modernizing the way our libraries are structured came up. Came up. Outdoor learning came up. Um, <clears throat> flexible furniture and stuff, but not necessarily as one of the top things. And high schools repair and modernize was first and campus security was second. And then third was a pro, uh, provide appropriately sized and equipped spaces. And this went beyond for specialty things. It, it talked about science, technology, arts, any of those spaces that are, well, I guess science is a specialty space as well. Um, and I think in middle school and high school, they both talked about improving and expanding the food service, the ability to serve more kids more quickly 
and the ability to have um, more space in lunch shelters for students. Um, and, and pickup areas was, was a common thread too. So I know we only focused on a few items. There are some other common threads and some things that um, that's the whole purpose of doing this, right, was to sort of take a look at what are, what are the things that our schools need and how can we address those? And I think, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to accomplish, but this is a, a great start, so. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Do you guys have everything you need or do you want me to summarize it? Are we good? Mrs. Lash, are you good? Just to confirm, so we're gonna go with what's here listed on the staff priorities, and then we're going to come back for the workshop in October to discuss utilizing other funds for the rest of the priorities. Is that right? If, if your staff can be ready by then, and I know you're under the weather, and you and I will talk and see uh, if we can have that done by then. That sounds good. Okay, perfect. All right, with that, we'll move on. The next regular open session business meeting of the Governing Board of Education is scheduled for September 13th, 2022. This meeting is adjourned Tuesday, September 6th, 2022 at 5.25 p.m. Good evening.